Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. It's Monday, the 21st of October, 2024. A beautiful, beautiful Monday morning. And today is known as the celebration of the mind day. That's right. So today is the day to celebrate your mind, celebrate the awesomeness, all the capabilities, all the things that your mind can do, can think, and can achieve. All right, on today's breakfast show, we'll be looking at several hot topics, one of which talks about the NSAS anniversary, while police fire tear gas dispersed protesters at Lekki Tongit. Another um, hot topic we're looking at much later in the show is federal government to hand over a national grid to independent operators. We'll also be taking global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our of the day to set the top. The mind is everything, what you think you become, and that is according to Buddha. And he says, the mind is everything, what you think you become. Now, this is so apt because like I said, it's the celebration of the mind day, celebrating your mind and the awesomeness that you are. And now Buddha is saying the mind is everything, what you think you become. If you think you're a success, well, you will become a success. If you think you're a failure, the, you know, <laughs> the atmosphere just knows how to take all, your, all of your thoughts, put them together and start to work either in your favor or against you. So the mind is what you think. The universe obviously looks at your mind and starts to manifest all of those things. And you know, even on Twitter or social media, you see people saying, I'm manifesting this, I'm manifesting that. Well, that's because you think it first in your mind. So if you want to do something, of course, you start to um, collate everything in your mind and say, you know what, how am I going to build this? And the moment you start to do that, that's the first step. Before you know it, execution comes in and voila, you are there. But if you're just going to sit in one place and not do anything and think, oh, I'm a failure, I can't, achieve, I can't achieve much, I can't really get up to anything, then that's where you're going to be. So this Monday, as a celebration of the Mind Day, and with what Buddha is saying, make sure that you have a paradigm shift in your mind. So it starts with the mind, and before you know it, everything will start to manifest in your favor. So make sure you're thinking good thoughts this morning all right let's move over to our top trending stories this first one talks about minimum wage deadline it says 26 states inactive as labor expresses frustration nearly two months after president bulletin was signed the new minimum wage into law only two states edo and adamawa have commenced payment of the 70,000 minimum wage to their workers this development comes as organized labor has issued an October deadline for all governors to implement a new wage or face the possibility of industrial action. Edo State notably began paying its workers 70,000 Naira minimum wage in June, two months before the law was officially signed, setting a precedent. Adamawa State followed in August, making these two states the early adopters of the new wage policy. In contrast, most states have yet to implement the new minimum wage. Among the states showing signs of readiness is Lagos, where Governor Babajide Sonwolu announced on October 16, 2024, that his administration was prepared to pay a minimum wage of 85,000 naira, significantly higher than the mandated 70,000 naira. However, this decision was made unilaterally without negotiations with organized labor. Labor leaders in Lagos have scheduled talks with the state's government starting on October 21 to formalize the wage structure. Governor Sonwa Olu during an interview emphasized that Lagos higher the minimum wage was not a competitive move, but rather a reflection of the state's financial capacity and affordability. Meanwhile, in Niger State, the chairman of the Labor Congress, Nigeria Labor Congress NLC, Comrade Idris Abdul Karim Lafene, noted that workers in the state have shown patience but are now expecting the government to act on the new wage law. Lafani indicated that the NLC had communicated its willingness to delay October salary payments if necessary to ensure the implementation of the 70,000 naira minimum wage thereafter. He reiterated that the state's workers would not accept anything less than the new minimum wage in October. With the October deadline fast approaching, all eyes are on the state governments as organized labor continues to push for compliance or full compliance with the new wage policy across Nigeria. 
I think this is a no-brainer. Of course, um, this uh, new minimum wage has been signed into act. It's been several months now, and of, we're wondering why are states delaying? There are so many people that need this money, and 70,000 naira is not even enough. It's not even enough. How much is a bag of rice? How much is beans right now? All of the grains, food first, you know. Before you start to talk about other things, we've seen fuel that has gone up to over a thousand naira. Transportation fees are off the roof. There are so many things. Housing, school fees, bills, electricity tariff has gone up as well. So is 70,000 naira even enough, you know, for people to, to cater for themselves? Not really. You know, there was a report that was said that for a family of four to be able to, you know, just live normal. You're not even living extravagantly. Um, you need about 150,000 naira monthly. And now we're still talking about 70,000 naira, which is way less than 150,000 naira. And mind you, even in the 150,000 naira, the amount that was stipulated for food was 1,200 and something naira. How much can 1,200 naira get you for food right now in this country? Can you really eat a healthy meal with 1,200 naira? Not really. And so you can imagine how much, how cut, you know, that figure is, that 150,000 naira. You can imagine how cut it is. Uh, yet, we're still discussing 70,000 naira for people. No. And I, and I think I would agree with the NLC at this point. I think it's important that governors start to pay this amount because these are people's well-being. These are people's lives are, like we're talking about. This is welfare for the nation, for everyone. And honestly, the 70000 naira is not enough, but that is a base point. That is where to even start from. And I mean, I'll commend Lagos State for um, saying they can pay 85000 naira, and the fact that it's not even competitive. Obviously, we know that things are way more expensive in Lagos. The amount I'm going to pay for housing in Lagos is not the same. I'm going to pay, you know, somewhere in, I don't know, somewhere in Ecotec Pioneer or so. That's not the same amount I'm going to pay somewhere in Bodija. So, of course, uh, Lagos is more expensive. There's so many factors to all of this. And sometimes I think we should look at the states and what's peculiar to them, especially if we know that certain things are more expensive, then the price should be increased a little bit. And I, I'm glad that Lagos, you know, is, is taking on that. But for other 26 states to not even, you know, budge when it comes to paying that amount, that is quite sad and unfortunate. And in fact, it's insensitive. I think that's the word. It's just insensitive because you should know what's happening in a country. You know what the people are facing. You know how hard it is to be in Nigeria right now due to our economy. And so if you're not even going to pay people, what am I supposed to do with something less than 70,000 naira? What can even get me? Yes, I'm supposed to show up at work, so I'm going to pay transportation. When I get to work, I'm probably going to have to eat and then still go back home, have my take home to say, okay, I want to use it to save for my rent. I want to use it to pay my bills. I want to use it to do other things. No, come on. 70,000 is, is even is almost next to nothing. But if that's even what you've agreed upon, then it should be implemented. And I think all the other 26 state governors definitely needs to do this. With the NLC saying they're going to go on an industrial action, well, sometimes, you know, that's what happens. Because if you do not take the bull by the horn, well, you're going to just be there and nothing's going to happen. So I hope it doesn't get to that because nobody likes, you know, an industrial action. Nobody likes a protest. Nobody likes strike. Nobody wants any of that. Just make sure that if this is what has been agreed upon, well, Pay the people. That's just what we want. Pay them. What is um, the va This is not even the value. Let's start with that. It's not even the value. It's not adequate at all. But at least pay them. Let them get something. Not dilly-dallying about. Hopefully, that gets to happen. All right, another top trending story says, imminent flash flood looms. Lagos warns residents. Residents of Lagos, well, they have been warned that there might just be... Um, well, they've been urged to brace up for imminent, imminent flash flooding following the heavy rainfall experience last Wednesday and Thursday. Um, Tokumbo Wahab, the Commissioner for Environment and Water Resources, described the rainfall as the heaviest in months. He noted that in addition to the rain, the release of the water from Oyo Dam has caused drainage channels to struggle to discharge into the rivers, which are already at elevated levels. 
Wahab emphasized that the flash flood advisory was necessary, citing data from the state's weather monitoring stations that indicated Thursday's rainfall was the most intense of the year. He reassured residents that the water levels are gradually receding, but advised continued caution. In a related development, the federal government has commenced construction of a multipurpose dam upstream off the River Dura in Buruku local government area of Benue State. This effort aims to manage heavy water flow from the region, which has contributed to flooding. According to Robert Ume Zulike, Deputy Director of Hydrology at the Federal Ministry of Water Resources and Sanitation, the dam will help mitigate the impact of sediment deposits that have reduced the river's capacity, causing overflows that have affected in infrastructure. Both initiatives highlight ongoing efforts to address the challenges posed by heavy rains and rising water levels across the country. Well, I mean, I'm glad they're already notifying us, but we definitely need precautionary measure. And I'm sure that's what they're trying to do with the dams, which is great. But before we got here, what were we doing? We need to be proactive sometimes in certain areas, especially when you know that um, lives and properties might just be at stake then we definitely need to be proactive. These are people's lives that we're talking about. These are people's properties that we're talking about. We've seen the heaviest rainfall um, so far in the year. Even though a lot of people have said, you know, we didn't have as much rain this year compared to, you know, other years. Um, and I'm sure that de that's um, dependent on the amount of times it had to rain. But when, we're, when the um, hydrology and, you know, the, the um, water resources seem are already telling us that, this might just be a problem. Well, I'm sure we definitely need to do something about it. But can we also talk about the drainage system in Lagos? Because this is about Lagos. Um, the drain, especially on the island, the drainage systems are not really good. Most times you're seeing so many places being flooded because we're not channeling the water where it's supposed to go to. And we definitely, if we're talking about sanitation, we definitely need to clean up all of the drainage drainages. I remember when I was much younger, we used to have like sanitation every Saturday, or I think every first Saturday, I can't remember, but I'm sure, you know, every Saturday or once a month or something like that, there used to be sanitation. Now there is no sanitation anymore. Everyone, you know, eats whatever, dumps it in the gutters, you know, clog everywhere, everywhere is blocked. And of course, what's going to happen? It's the environment. We're not even trying to save our environment. It's going to get blocked. And the water isn't going to flow to where it needs to, into the rivers and all of that. So um, that's something we really, really need to look at. If we're not bringing back sanitation, well, the government, you know, they have to have people that are being employed. I know that um, I think Loma or one of, them, one of them agencies, they definitely go around. But most times it's usually the highways. It's usually the expressways, but when it comes to like the, the, the inner roads, when it comes to like the streets, we don't really have all of that. I'm sure maybe each, um, each one is peculiar. Maybe people, residents from there, we just have to employ people. But we need to really try to ensure that we're cleaning out our drainages because that is one major cause of the flooding that we might be seeing, aside the rain. Because guess what? The rain is definitely going to come down. There's nothing we're going to do about it is the environment that's going to happen we have an ecosystem of course that's going to happen but what can we do to mitigate it the dam great clearing of the drainages definitely another one we definitely need to find a way because if we do not do this then guess what the water is probably going to come into our houses and what happens lives and properties might just be at stake so we definitely need to know what we're doing when it comes to that all right, our final top trending story says Enugu police chief urges residents to ignore sit-at-home protests. The Enugu State Commissioner of Police, Kanayo Uzuegbu, has issued a strong warning to pro-Biafra agitators amid call for a two-day sit-at-home protest planned for October 21 and 22 across five southeastern states, as well as parts of Delta, Rivers, and Kogi states. The group behind the protest claims to be launching Biafran activities. Zeg will urge residents to disregard a criminally minded viral video from an unidentified individual promoting the sit at home order. It described the video's messages, a message as baseless and a deliberate attempt to incite fear and unrest within the state. 
The commissioner emphasized that Enugu state has moved beyond such illegal state-at-home directives, which he said aim to destabilize the social, economic, and psychological well-being of the community under the guise of sectionist movements. He assured citizens that they should go about their lawful activities without fear as the police, in collaboration with other security agencies, are fully prepared um, to maintain peace and security. Zegbu warned that any individuals or groups attempting to disrupt public order would be dealt with decisively. He also urged parents and guardians to advise their children against participating in activities that could undermine the state's peace, cautioning that legal consequences for such actions could be severe. Well, I'm sure the police, they are ramping up, doing all that they need to do to ensure the safety of people because this obviously can incite fear. Um, we've seen what has happened in the southeastern states um, so far, especially with this whole protest, sit at home. And I think it's a sit at home Monday. There's been that for, for a while. And I remember seeing a video of some people being killed, even a lady who had a, um, she was a POS operator. She was being killed as well, which is quite sad quite unfortunate because these are people just trying to, you know, make their daily bread, put food on their table, and there are some criminal elements who tell you to sit at home because we're pro-Biafra and all of that. I think at the end of the day, maybe the government needs to sit down with these people. What are their grievances? Let's come to the table. How can we help you? What would you want to us to do better? Because this is really, really getting out of hand. Going to the East right now is quite scary. A lot of people are scared for their safety. Um, you don't really have as much security that, as you would want. And even if you're going with, you know, um, you know, Mopos and, you know, all of that, like the police and, and that, you're still scared because you, you don't know what you're going to find there. You don't know what you're going to see on the way. Um, so it's better for, instead of saying, you know what, these are criminal um, elements, let's not listen to them. Why not invite them? I remember when we used to have, um, you know, those guys from the Niger Delta, I've forgotten what they used to go. They used to be called like um, uh, militants, that's the word. Yes, the Niger Delta militants. At some point, they had to sit down and have a conversation. Why can't we do that? And I know they tell you do not negotiate with terrorists. I know that. But sometimes you need to understand the peculiarity of the situation and say how best can we work this out? If, for instance, maybe that's not what's supposed to be happening, then why are we not arresting these people? Because at the end of the day, people's lives are hinged on this. Their safety are hinged on this. And so with this whole sit at home, I mean, that's not what anybody wants because you want to be able to go to work. You want to be able to live freely. You want to be able to know that, yes, your safety is guaranteed. And if that's not happening, it's quite unfortunate. And we just expect the government to ensure that, you know, Whatever they need to do, if it's dialogue, if it's arrest, whatever it is, um, that should be done as swiftly as possible. All right, so we'll go on a short break. We look at the weather. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.